In this video, I'll show you how to fish the pole feeder. So today I'm fishing the River Avon uh, in Evesham on the Common Road stretch. It's run by the Evesham and District Angling Association. Three pound a day for a ticket, dead cheap, you can buy them on the bank. Um, or you can also get a membership yearly, 15 pounds from the two tackle shops in Evesham, Manor Angling and the Bait Box. As you can see, the river's come up probably a good eight to 10 inches in the last couple of days. We've had a lot of rain, um, it's chundering through. You can barely hold through on an 8 gram running rig, so today I'll just show you a few tips on how I approach a flooded river like this, and hopefully have a few. So, here I'll be showing you how I fish the pole feeder method. Um, this is a big heavy method designed for big rivers when they're up and coloured, when you've got loads of snags and debris coming through, and you need to hold bottom when 10 gram plus flat floats won't even hold. Um, you can use the pole feeder to get your bait in. It's a lot more uh, accurate than a normal feeder. You can get your bait concentrated a lot more. Um, so yeah, I'll run you through the rig quick. What I've got is a full top five worth of 010 braid. That's about eight or nine pound breaking strain, nice and strong. I've got that from elastic straight down to a size 11 swivel. Uh, from there, I've then got a very small piece of elastic. That's uh, about four inch piece of four to six uh, slick elastic. What this does is it acts as a bite detection. What you've got is your feeder on the bottom of the river going straight up to your top kit vertically above it. As a bite would be, it's just a, a vibration in the elastic. Obviously I'm using a quite a strong elastic. This is a 12 to 14, 2.1 mil slick. So it's nice and strong to get them big fish out, but you will miss lots of bites on that. So by having this short piece of elastic, um, what you can do is just overhand knot it to the braid you then make a small extension on it just by sliding it up. What then happens is as the fish pulls on the braid on your hook link, they will then pull this elastic up, offering much less resistance to your main elastic, meaning your bite detection is much better and you should be able to hook more fish. When that then gets stretched too far, the braid simply comes in action and it's direct through the braid. The elastic won't snap because that's just overhand knotted on. In the worst case scenario, it just pings off and you can tie a new bit on, but it's that easy to do. Um, so that's when the fish pulls it, it's nice and strong, going then straight through to your elastic. Um, this will get anything out. It's on a full top four worth of elastic. So loads of elastic in there. It will stretch for days, get anything out. Um, the extra added is I've got on the side puller as well. So if it is a big fish and I can't quite get out with enough pole, I can just yank the elastic out, get that fish out the swim. So going down to the business end, the main benefits of having a braided rig as opposed to your normal monofilament. Um, to start with, it's a lot thinner than normal mono. So this is 010 braid as I've previously mentioned. Very strong, very light, very thin. Uh, what that means is obviously there's a lot of debris coming through. It's just less likely to get caught up against that, which means you've got more time in the water, less time pulling out snags. Great success. It's also got no stretch in it. So as a, a fish pulls on your hook link, it'll go straight through amplified in that short piece of elastic, meaning you'll have more bites hit, more bites seen, which is also very good. The only downside of braid is because it's so strong, because it's so thin, if you do get snagged, you can lose the lot. So what I've then done is by using a four turn water knot, I've tied on a short length of 012 mono and to that a small snap link. And what that meant then means is if this feeder gets snagged in the water, either by a fish or just by a normal snag, um, you've got a weak spot in the line. So this can then break, meaning your rig can get out and it's completely fish safe, basically. So always remember to do that. Don't do a direct braid or else you uh, will end up with a mess and maybe even broken carbon. So that's the rig. Simply got the feeder on the bottom. Hook link will come off. I pack the feeder mainly with ground bait with a few extra particles in. I try and do that quite tight. 
Um, you want that bait to come up slowly and concentrated in this area. The same token, you need a big feeder. So this is a, a 40 gram feeder and I've got an uh, ounce and a quarter of extra lead on there. I've positioned the lead around the base of the front, which then basically means all the weight is in a ring around it. So as I lower this rig into the bottom, it should sit just like that. What that means is you get again a slower release of bait, which is better. It's more concentrated. As if the feeder lands like this, A, you're less likely to see a bite because there's more play in the feeder, but B, the bait gets washed through, potentially out your swim. And there's a lot of pace on here today, so you want that bait straight on your hook link, not washed away. Uh, going down, I haven't got a hook link on yet, but typically you'll be using anything from 016 to 018, even 020. You want nice and strong line, big hooks. Um, you can get away with it one like this. There's only about four inches of visibility. Um, so the fish aren't going to be bothered about a difference between an 012 or an 018 hook link. So use what you're comfortable with. Use nice strong gear. If you're going to catch anything, you want to get it out. This isn't a fair rig to be messing around with. Um, again, you don't want that fish running into any snags. So nice and strong hooks, big hooks. I use a B711 in like a size 13 or 11. Um, bait wise, I'll be using worms, lob worms, big bunches of maggots, maybe casters. Um, so you want a big hook that's up to the job. If you do hook a fish, you want to get it out. So that's the key process. Nice and easy. So you've just got your feeder on the bottom. You'll have your pole holding vertically up so you can see that little bite detection. And your feet, your rig typically sits like so. Um, so your hook link, I use about half a meter of hook link. Um, about half a meter worth of hook link. Um, so your hooks are around here away from the feeder. Just gives enough de uh, distance so that your feed is in your feeder, um, your hook baits within the feed. So that's the key principles. We'll put it in the selection in a minute. So what I've got here ground bait wise, I've got a bag of Pro Natural Bream Dark to make it a nice dark mix, a load of brown crumb, and a little bit of Census Lake Fine. What that does is it makes a very, very sticky mix. I mean, I'm hardly pressing that at all. And it makes a lovely big ball in there. And then to that, I've added about 100 ml of pinky, just mix it all through. And I'll add a small pinch of hemp just to put it through. But with the uh, Pro Natural Bream Dark, you do get a lot of hemp already in there, so you don't have to worry about adding too much to it. Just put a little pinch more in there. So what I'll do then is I'll probably put six big balls in. I'm going to loose feed them, so just throw them out over my pole line. These will get down nice and quick. It's a very heavy mix. So ball wise, you want to make nice, big, firm balls. I'll make four that are rock hard. So really put your arm between it. So they've got a nice long breakdown time. You don't want these breaking down for at least 15 minutes in this flow. So I'll do four like this, nice hard balls. And I'll make two softer balls, which will break down probably after a couple of seconds of them hitting the bottom, um, just to get some immediate action in the peg, get some bait down on the deck. So that's the hard ball. Softball wise, similar size, but just don't compress it as much. So that'll do for the softball. That just breaks down nice and easily. So within hitting the bottom, that'll all break down. You get a nice bed of ground bait on the bottom with a few pinkies and a little bit of hemp in it. And then that hard ball, this will take absolutely ages to break down, but that's a nice thing for bream and roach. They want to be sat there waiting for that to break down, picking up all the little loose offerings, uh, having a little munch and just getting them interested. So I'll chuck these in and give it a little go. So one thing, always take your cup off your cup and kit when you're gonna ball it. You don't want one of these big heavy balls landing on your cup and kit or else you just smash it in half. So take that cup off, just reduce there's a chance that happens. So I'll just get out to my Chosen length of 13 meters. Typically, I always put my pole just upstream of where I'm going to be balling it. Uh, that way, I've got the distance set, and I'll just ball it about a meter or two downstream, as that way, again, it reduces the chances of me cracking my pole. So, I'm throwing in the two soft balls first. These will be breaking down first. I'm just doing nice underarm lobs upstream, downstream, past the pole tip, and smack in the centre. We're going to make a nice area 
around about three meters squared of your pole. Perfect. So that's all in your pole line. So, starting on the pole feeder. Uh, I've just chucked in my six balls. I'm now going to drop it on the pole feeder straight away and see what's out there. So to start with, I'll uh, put a little dendrobina on. I've gone through the head and just nipped the head off. So the juice is all flowing at the top. The hook's quite far down, so it's a good 10 mil down. And I've just nipped that with a little pinky, just to make it a little bit more bright than usual. So from there, I'll then grab my nice feeder, put a nice coating in the bottom of ground bait. So I've just plugged the bottom. So it's got a nice strong base. I want that really firm so the bait doesn't come out. And then put a nice pinch of pinky, a few maggots in there, a lot of free offerings. And then just plug that, nice loads of ground bait on top. Really squeeze that in, don't be afraid. Um, it ain't gonna go anywhere basically. And then because I've got a little side puller bush on my top four, what that allows me to do is just loop my braid rig around it. And what that does is keeps my feeder off the bottom, uh, up from going in the water basically. So like that, I'll just ship out, turn my pole the other way, and then the feeder will fall off in the right position. What you don't want to happen is that feeder to swing in the water early and you lose all your ground bait and your free offerings. So I'm just shipping out, keeping my pole nice and high, twist it the other way of what I put it on, it then falls off, slightly upstream, drop that feeder in, and keeping the tension on, just lower your rig on, until you can feel it hit the bottom. So that's it hit the bottom. You now got to keep that pole as straight and as still as you can. You can just see that elastic stretching a little bit and it's on a slight angle which tells you that the flow is quite strong. Uh, the feeder hasn't moved though, so it's working well. And when that little orange elastic rattles, that'll be a bite. Just had a lovely bite from the lobworm. Feels like a half decent fish anyway. I've got a big old feeder on here, so you just got to take your time, bring it up slowly. Oh, that's an eel. Happy days. Let's see if we can get up for the camera. There we go. Lovely fish. See the lobworm dangling out of his mouth and everything. Happy days. Another eel. Happy days. Slightly bigger eel than last time. Let's see if I can hold it up for the camera on the lobworm. So, I've taught you through my hook baits that I use on the pole feeder. Um, using a size 13 at the moment, so you can put pretty much any bait you want at the moment. So, starting off, go for some maggots. Normally put two on, two red ones. The way I hook them though is through the pointy end of the bait, and what that does is makes them wriggle a lot more than normal. So it's a really good tip in conditions like this, where they can't quite see the bait, they need to get the movement in order to get the bite. So next bait, triple pinky, a really good one for bream, is just literally ram as many pinkies as you can on a hook, don't be afraid. I often start with three, but um, you can go anywhere up to four, five, even six, they don't care. So that's triple pinky, nice small bait, but big hook. So plenty of chance of hooking them. Wicked. So now, lastly, what I've got on my bait tray is the lobworm. This is quite a small one as they go. A few different ways you can hook them. First of all, straight through the fat end, like so, and then just nip it however far you want to go down. So sometimes you can fish a nice small bit, but it's quite wide. Other times you can fish it quite long and wait for the bait. Another way of doing it is again, snip the worm. I do it just below the saddle, like so. Hook it through the juicy bit. And then I'll just tip that with either a pinky or a maggot. Go with the pinky at the moment just because it's a little bit brighter. 
So tip it with a maggot or a pinky, just below the barb so it can't come off. And that is a very nice big bait, plenty of option, but you do have to wait for the bite to develop before striking or else they might not get the hook in the, in the mouth. So a few top tips for the day. Uh, first of all is the use of a bump bar. These are absolutely critical when fishing your pole feeder. It's a stationary method, which means that feeder has to stay still no matter what's happening. So at the moment there's a little bit of a breeze um, going upstream, which is making it a little bit tricky. But this bump bar and the use of my leg and my hand against it really cements that feeder still. So that feeder staying dead still, which means any bites will be detected through my pole straight away. Um, the other thing which is almost an essential when pole fishing is the use of a dolly butt. So I've got a little half metre section here, which is reinforced, so it's mega strong. Um, so at the moment I'm sat on it and I've got no fear of my pole breaking, which is just a little bit of a protection for the pole. It also means if I have to ship against any rough ground, pole's dead safe, but ain't going anywhere this. Um, ground bait for today, been using the Pro Natural Bream Dark and a bit of brown crumb and a bit of Census Lake, as earlier discussed. Really smelly mix, so it's perfect for all species. Um, but today we're going to focus on the bream and roach. Um, I've mixed that earlier as discussed, so if you did miss that, then just scroll back a couple of minutes and have a little look. But um, we put six big balls in at the start. It took about an hour before we had our first bite, which is a skim of around about pound mark. Um, then went a bit iffy for a bit, and we've had a few more bites before an eel moved in, uh, which is always a bit weird. And uh, since then we've had a nice hybrid, so fingers crossed we've got a few more bites. Uh, the day's still young, sun's still bright, so uh, let's get fishing. Another little trick is just put some shot about six inches away from your hook, like so. I've got a number one shot just on my hook length. What can happen is if your feed is on the bottom and there's too much undertow, your hook length can be wafting too high. So by putting that little shot on it just gets it lower down for them skimmer, roach, bream to have a little munch on. I've been having a few bites, but I haven't had a touch in the last 20 minutes. So before I was fishing, between about five and 10 minutes, before I was bringing the feeder in and refilling it, um, because I haven't any bites, I'm gonna introduce a bit more bait to the swim. So I'll put a feeder in every probably two minutes and do that four to five times just to kickstart the swim, get a bit more bait in there, get the fish feeding again. And in those feeder fills, I'll just put a little bit more mince worm again, just to see if I can bring back that better stamp of fish. We've had a few decent fish today. Uh, it's been challenging conditions in this rising river, but plenty of fish to be had, a few lost as well. Um, we will be doing a few more of these in the future for Chris, so if you want to see any more, make sure to subscribe to Chris's channel. There's been plenty of content.